This note says, ready to play? Where, oh, where does the light hide? Put this on before you go inside? <laughs> oh boy, this is about to be interesting. So what am I supposed to do? Put this on? Yep, that's exactly what the note says. Come here, I'll help you. No, stop it, <laughs> Bree. I'm here. Okay, I think we got it. Time to go inside. Wait, wait, out! I can't. Caroline, ow, go. ow, wait, I, literally I think you hurt my knee. Okay, gosh, blindfolds are so dangerous. Okay, well, now what? Usually our package has our next gear set in it, but it just had this. Um, I don't see any gears anywhere and clearly you can't either. So hold on, let me go see. Oh gosh. Well, me. don't worry about me. I'll just oh. be here. Hmm. That's weird. I really didn't see it. And I have no idea where our next gear set is. Ah, but you know who always does? Hey, Samara, what's on the agenda for today? Where's our gear? Why am I blindfolded? <laughs> and how is this a game? So many questions. I love it. Today, we're shaking things up and doing them a little bit differently. Caroline, you are gonna be responsible for finding the next gear set for today's project. Me? Finding a gear? <laughs> Without my eyes? Wait, how can I do that? Oh, oh. <laughs> have we forgotten that I can't see? That's just a little problem. It's just a tiny, tiny, tiny problem, and I can totally help. Hey, Samara, just tell us what we need to do. First things first, here are the rules. Brie, you cannot touch anything. Today, you are Caroline's guide only. You will use your voice to tell her exactly what she needs to do to find your gear. Wait a minute. Only my voice? But she's blindfolded and literally can't see anything. How can she even make it to the gearbox without me like kind of doing it for her? These are the rules of the game. Caroline is responsible for following what you tell her, but it's gonna be up to her and her choice to do what you say or not. And it'll be your job to use your voice to tell her, you got this. Yeah, yeah, we got this. I'm nervous, but ready to start. <laughs> hey, Samara, is there anything else you can tell us to help us a little more before we get started? Yes, Brie, you will need to use your words to give directions. So use words like turn left, then right, or stop. Gently reach down and feel to your left, stuff like that. Ah, easy enough. Yeah, says the person who can see. <laughs> Okay, Samara, where can I find the directions? Taped under your desk, you will find a map of the creation station. It points you in the direction of your next gear set. But you have to go in order of what it tells you to do. I'll be watching, so don't skip ahead. Are you ready for the game to begin? Um... Oh yeah, let's do this. Okay, ready? I got the map. Oh, I think I found it. 
it's shaped like a box and it feels like a box. Yep. It's gotta be a box. Yep. Is this where our gear is, Samira? It sure is. All right, Bree, the final instruction is written on your map. Go ahead and read it out loud. Okay. It says, your eyes are covered and you cannot see, but this is the perfect place to be. The one who sees has only one choice. To build your set, you must use your voice. Take time to pause and come near. The one who's blind can still hear. The one with the blindfold takes the lead. To build this set, you have everything you need? Um, what? Hey, Samara, what does that mean? Wait, I think it means that I'm the builder here and you have to tell me what to do. But it's up to me to follow the instructions to build. Hmm. Okay, okay, well, first, dump out everything in there. <laughs> Good job! <laughs> Done. Okay, hey Samara, give us our update on our next gear. You heard of this gear a few weeks ago when we talked about gifts. It's one of those gifts. Limited edition evangelism is the gear in the Fluency Collection that we're focusing on today. To understand just how our evangelism gear works, you must be a part of the building process. This gear activates when you use your words to guide someone through building. Oh, now I understand what's written on our map. Okay, step one, help Caroline build. First we, um, oh, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. First we find the evangelism gear, Caroline. Take your right hand and feel around the table until the gear is in your hand. Okay. It's kind of bulky, kind of bulky. Wait, I think I got it. Okay, Brie, is there an engraving on it? Oh. Oh. Ah, no, Sorry. ouch, ouch, it's okay. Note to self, back up when Caroline's handing me something. Oh. Okay, it does, it says R10 1317. And I brought my Bible, so let me go get it. Caroline, don't move. Okay. I'm going to it now. Romans 10, 13. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one that they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. So, is this talking about people telling others about the good news? The good news of Jesus? That would be my guess. All things seem to point to Jesus in this case. Samira? Yes, you both are correct. When we activate our evangelism gear, we're using our voices to tell others about Jesus. It's telling them who he is. He is God. It's telling them what he did for us and how he made it possible for us to be a part of God's family. There are a lot of people who don't know about Jesus. There's also a lot of people who have heard of him, but they don't believe that he's God. Some think he was just a nice person. Some people believe that he was just a story and it was made up. Some believe that having faith isn't a big deal and they don't care. And other people even believe in fake gods and not in Jesus. And some people believe that there's no God at all. There are so many people that haven't heard or believed the good news of Jesus. And they're walking around not knowing how loved they are. It's almost like they're blind to it. People need Jesus. They need to know how much he cares. They need to know how much he loves them and how he cares about even the things that they need and what they feel. He cares about their families and he cares about the things that they care about. People need Jesus, but someone has to use their voice to tell them that. I'll show you what I mean. Brie, look at Caroline and try to tell her a message with your hands only. Don't use your voice at all. Okay, I got this. Brie, hello, did you do it? Yeah. Oh. Brie, are you there? Samara? She's still there, right in front of you actually. Caroline, do you believe the message Brie just gave you? Message? Huh? I don't even know what it was. I couldn't see. She needs to tell me what she said before I can believe anything. Caroline, I said I love you. Samira, you were so right. She had no idea what I said until I told her out loud. Is that what happens when people activate their scripture gear? Yes, people need Jesus, but someone has to tell them. 
If there was only one thing that you could remember from today, I would want it to be just that. People need Jesus, but someone has to tell them. People need Jesus, but someone has to tell them. Got it. When Jesus walked on earth, he used his voice to show people how much God loved them. He would tell them that out loud. He would tell them that they were so loved and he would teach them things. He taught them what was right and then he also taught them what was wrong. But sometimes people need to hear words and actually have an example to help their brains understand it more. And Jesus was really good at that. So Jesus would use things that happened in their lives to help them hear it and get a picture of it in their head so that they could understand it better. Let me show you one example of how he did this. Bree, go to your Bible and look for Luke 5, 1 through 11. Read it to Caroline. Okay, it says this. One day, as Jesus was standing beside Lake Galilee, many people were pressing all around him. They wanted to hear the word of God. Jesus saw two boats at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had left them and were washing the nets. Jesus got into one of the boats, the one that belonged to Simon, and Jesus asked Simon to push off a little from the land. Then Jesus sat down in the boat and continued to teach the people on the shore. When Jesus had finished speaking, he said to Simon, take the boat into deep water. If you will put your nets in the water, you will catch some fish. Simon answered, Master, we worked hard all night trying to catch fish, but we caught nothing. But you say to put the nets in the water, so I will. The fishermen did as Jesus told them, and they caught so many fish that the nets began to break. They called their friends in the other boat to come to help them. The friends came, and both boats were filled so full that they were almost sinking. The fishermen were all amazed at the many fish they caught. When Simon Peter saw what had happened, he bowed down before Jesus and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were amazed too. Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will be fishermen for men. When their men brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed Jesus. Jesus had been teaching that day, and he cared about the people who were listening to him. But he wanted his disciples to care about them too. His disciples were fishermen. They would go fishing, they would catch fish. That was their job every day. Jesus knew what mattered to them, and he also knew what they did, and he knew what they would understand. They needed to catch fish to be able to make money. This is how they made their living. This is how they provided for their families. This is how they got food. They cared about catching fish a lot. They really cared about it, and it was something that they did a lot. And Jesus knew that. So he used his voice to show them something important by using that as an example. He used something important to them to show them what was important to him. And what's important to him is people. Jesus was using his voice in a real life example to show them the same way that they care about catching fish. He wants them to care about catching people, like wanting them to know God. He told them to go and be like fishers of men. He wanted them to go and tell others about God, tell others about the right way to live. Jesus was showing how to use their evangelism here. Just like they caught lots of fish and they'd get excited and that was a good thing and something they needed to do. He was saying, hey, Go do that, but do that with people, like catch people for Jesus. Tell them about me and tell them about God. He wanted them to be fishers of men. Bree, now it's your turn to practice this. Find your gears, put them on the table and help Caroline build. It's time to build something special to help you guys remember this part of evangelism. I gotta take my blindfold off to see this. Good job! I can't believe you actually did it. Oh yeah, I did it. Being blindfolded was hard, but hearing your words helped me so much. That helped me build this. I know this was a game, but it really got me thinking. There are people in the world who can't see how much God wants them to be in his family. It's like they're blind to it. I can make a choice to tell them though. I can be a fisher of men. This week, I'm going to activate my evangelism gear. I have three people in mind that I need to tell about Jesus. Mm. Come on. 